Stone House, on the edge of the Cotswolds. When we get to the top of the hill, we'll stop and then we'll start looking at what's around us. Geography teacher Jill Ferry's been leading her year sevens up this hill for 28 years. But before term ends, she'll be making a longer trip with three of her colleagues to a school 4,000 miles away and to a continent where none of them has been before. Maiden Hill is a 700 pupil secondary school in Gloucestershire. It does a range of international work and has just won a British Council Teachers TV competition open to all schools who've received or are working towards the DFES International School Award. The prize? An overseas visit for four teachers. Louise Good's going, along with her close friend, Jill Boucher. Greatly appreciated. Um, starting with chocolate bar wrappers and empty chocolate boxes. If anyone's got any, can we have them, please? Because they'll be DT really teacher, Thank Kim you. Kenny's also That's going. Still. And Jill Ferry, who spotted the competition. Would anyone like to describe to me where Stonehouse is in relation to the surrounding countryside? In the Cotswold. I really feel the need for our children to be made aware of different cultures and different countries and what the world is like beyond Maidenhill. John, which direction? Um, oh, yes. Well done. The, the teachers are going to Western Kenya, where they hope to cement a link they've made with a rural secondary school. I don't like cows, they're freaky. There's one there, On the teacher's winning entry, they said that as both schools served rural areas, they hoped the visit would suggest ways of motivating their pupils, some of whom have low aspirations and limited prospects. Yes. Okay. So you add anything else that you can actually see? Louise Good was asked to write the bid. I said, oh, that's interesting, and I took it home and I literally sat up until about midnight writing this up just making it up as I went along. It just didn't matter, we weren't going to win it. And then we got a phone call a few weeks later, and then it was real. And because it was like a really big thing, oh, everybody else was interested then. How did you get your name? How did you get to go on this Kenya trip? I said, I blooming wrote it, that's how I got to go on it. I just wanted my buddies, really. So then it was a hit political potato, and I thought, well, that just shows I've only been teaching a year and a half, doesn't it? God, right, you lot, shush. Kim Kenny switched careers four years ago. Right, shh. For the first three years, I just wanted to jack it in and stack shelves in Sainsbury's. You know, having 100-plus teenagers in your face every day, 100 different personalities. Kids just not believing you, heckling you, just being challenging. I more than one out, couldn't I? It's not how I imagined it was going to be. They'd all be exactly the same size, so that's the advantage. What's the disadvantage, bearing in mind that these are the three that I've got? Will? Um, they're not very big. Oh, it was worth waiting for. Ah, look, see, the whole All these are maths. Yes. Kyle, yeah. you're often having to dumb your lesson down a bit so that kids can access it here. We try to make our lessons all singing, all dancing, entertaining, ten-minute chunks here, ten-minute chunks there, a starter, a plenary. Studs! Our kids have got such short attention spans and they're not used to just sitting down and learning. If you just stop chattering, shh, 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 shh. they want to be entertained. Ladies. I'm bored, now entertain me. Some of you. Oh, somebody's throwing a pencil, oh, how interesting. They're so easily distracted. <coughs> just keep them. Hold everything up, stick it in the envelope, Ben, seal it up when you're happy. And it's really oh, frustrating case, for me. Morrow High School's in southwest Kenya, near Lake Victoria. All four visitors have agreed to do some teaching, and they're nervous. For the less experienced, it could test their capabilities and their preconceptions. I'm really nervous, actually, because I think their level of teaching will be way above ours. I'm thinking, will I be good enough? Will I be able to produce a lesson 
that is up to the standard that they are used to learning. I just think they will be so much more academic than us. When we see the limited resources they have and how, you know, rich and lucky we are to be here, I really don't think I can teach them anything, actually. Morrow has 140 pupils, aged from 14 upwards. And like all Kenyan state secondaries, it charges parents. But as nearly half the students are orphaned, primarily through AIDS, the school faces a constant struggle to stay afloat. To progress through its four classes, pupils are required to pass an end-of-year exam. If they fail, they have to repeat the year or drop out. Consequently, some pupils are in their 20s. Good morning, everyone. I am glad that at long last, what we have been anxiously waiting for, our visitors from Maiden Hill School in England have come. You are most welcome. I'm surprised that there is no man among you. <laughs> I hope next time a man is going to come. <laughs> because we are a mixed school. Okay. I'd like to be asked to introduce us. So, hello, everybody. Uh, this is Jill Ferry, who teaches geography. Hello. Uh, this is Louise Good, and she teaches maths. And this is Jill Boucher, who teaches English. And my name is Kim Kenny, and I teach design and technology. And that's us. <laughs> Please let us cooperate so that we make the best and the maximum uh, benefit from uh, the visit by uh, uh, these four great ladies. You may go to your classes. First, the visitors see how the Kenyans do it. Morrow's head. Tom Coeli teaches history. He's been teaching for 19 years. OK. We're going to look at sources of information. Sources of information. On the history of the East African coasts. Where do we get information from? Now, one of the sources. We will call them Greco-Roman documentaries. Now, what are Greco-Roman documentaries? These are documents. These are documents which were written by early Greek and Roman traders. Early Greek and Roman traders. Another example. Louise is watching Form 1, Algebra. B plus they're very chalk and talk. It's very, you will sit down and listen. But they're learning it. The simple past tense is used. All Kenyan schoolings in English the country's third language. To so Karen on Dago's lessons focus on grammar. So most verbs, most verbs form their simple past tense by, by adding ed, by adding ed to the words. So if you have any verb in English that ends with a consonant, anytime you want to write its simple past tense, you'll find that it is going to end with ED. Tom's a local boy who went on to study at Kenya's most prestigious university, Nairobi. You walked straight into your classroom. Mm -hmm. Everybody was there waiting for you. Yeah, they have to Everybody wait. had yeah. their books out. Mm -hmm. And you just started the lesson. Yes. You didn't have to tell them <laughs> to stop talking. You didn't have to give them any instructions to do with being ready for the lesson. Mm -hmm. They do quite a lot of writing. 
Do they do that all day? They must, or is that just in certain lessons? Because they were doing a they, lot they of writing. They do a lot of lessons. writing. The yeah. Kenyan system, there's a lot yeah. of writing. In fact, there's a lot of work. Yeah. A lot of work. What now they are doing uh, in four years is what we used to do in six years. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah. we went, uh, we, there was a reorganization of the Kenyan education system. Right. So <coughs> the secondary cycle was reduced from six to four years. Right. So, so they have a lot of work. Yeah. Mm. Here, the young people themselves can see the purpose in education. Yeah. Our children, a lot we of them people. can no longer see the purpose in education. I've got to say, I was quite teary this morning when we came because senior students stood so respectfully and dignified and so studiously made me feel so ashamed. It did, it upset me. When I see these people striving and working so hard compared to the students I see, it actually makes me really angry at myself. No, respectful, I think there we beat you. I think Africa still beats yeah. Europe in... Um, I think it does, yeah. hands yes, down. ...with regard yeah. to discipline of students yeah. and the uh, mm. respect. Six o'clock, the end of a long day. The pupils clean the school and fetch water. The big shock was how didactic the teaching was. There's a lot of repetition. I don't think that that style of teaching would be acceptable at the school that I teach in. I think the pupils would find it very, very difficult to maintain concentration with that method. The day of reckoning. How will the Kenyans react to the English style of teaching? And how will the English react to Kenyan students? Jill Ferry is teaching a lesson about the British climate. I've brought my torch with me to actually give you some idea. Now, you've got to imagine that my torch is the sun. At the equator, the sun's rays shine directly down. So that means that the sun's rays are very concentrated in a small area. If I shine my torch directly down in front of me. Let me do it here. So a few of you can see where it's darker. The closer I go, the brighter the light. But if I shine it from a distance, it covers a much bigger area. OK, good morning. I've been given two lessons to do something a bit different. So. I'm going to give you two minutes to match up these words. Louise intends to liven up the maths Radius, with a few interactive activities. Circumference. First, a starter. Yes, points to this. Just match them up in your head. And while you're thinking about it, you're going to get some equipment. So, would you give everybody one of those, please? Um, objectives. This is what we're going to learn this lesson. I would like you to turn to the person next to you. So I want you to work in pairs, like you two together. And I would like you to tell the person next to you why it's hotter at the equator and cooler at the poles, OK? Right, one minute. Tell the person next to you. Can you now swap your paper with the person next to you? And I want you to measure the lines that people have marked and tick if they got it right. So you've got one minute, OK? So swap your sheets of paper and measure each other's radius and diameters and see if people have drawn the right, the right things. 
to swap papers and measure with your ruler. Put your hand up if you did the correct. Yeah? No? We didn't all get it wrong, did we? No. Did everybody get these circles right? Yes. OK, brilliant. In your books, can you write some sentences to explain why latitude influences how hot it is? That's good. Well done. Pointing directly. Good. That's right, because at the poles, the light is much spread out, so it's a lot weaker. So the temperatures are much lower, making it hotter than the poles. That's right. And the sun's rays are concentrated, so it makes it very hot and at an angle and spread out at the poles. Well done, it's very good. That's good, but you've written altitude. Yeah. Altitude is how high it is. So that needs to be latitude. <coughs> okay, so instead of the AL, you need to write LA. But those first two letters are in a different way. Yes. Okay. The torch wasn't very bright. Yeah, but I think it needs to serve the purpose. Yeah? Could yeah. you see it at the back? Yeah, I, you I could also see it shining on the globe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. It was making the point like that. Right, right. Good, good. I think next time when I'm explaining about revolution and uh, mm -hmm. and the rotation, yes, I'll bring a torch. <laughs> I'll be. Oh, I yeah. was I was using another method. Yes. But I think a torch is is closer to the sun than, <laughs> than the method I was using. That was quite good. You know. The reason, the problem that we have, again, I think this is what I said yesterday. We have so much to cover, so, so that makes us to kind of rush uh, through the Through the content. Yeah, through the content. Yeah. The approach is quite good. If our curriculum developers would give us a smaller content, mm -hmm. that approach would be mm -hmm. very superb. Mm -hmm. yeah, very, very superb. Mm -hmm. That was a good lesson. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. This is to encourage you to think creatively. It's a problem-solving task. And designers solve problems all the time. That's their job. Design and technology isn't on the Kenyan curriculum. To join the, the aim of up. Kim's exercise in creative thinking is to join up all the dots without lifting the pen off the page. The way to do this is to have a go and then draw the dots again, have another go, draw the dots again, have another go. So you just keep trying until you find the solution. OK, so remember the pencil has to stay on the page. You're not allowed to lift it off. So dispense with the ruler. Do it freehand. Be brave and bold. That's what you need to be. Try drawing the dots again and then think about diagonal lines but making them longer. So I'm kind of giving you a few more hints now. Diagonal line, longer, doesn't it? It needs to go outside the box. Okay. So we're going to investigate polygons. An investigation is where you find out. What's happening to these numbers here? As, we, as our shapes have more sides, what's happening to the, ang the, the number of degrees inside each shape? It's increasing, isn't it? Is there a pattern to how it's increasing? OK, I'm not giving you any answers. You have a go. You can talk to each other once you start finding out what's happening. You can have a chat about it. How about if I give you the next two numbers and then I give you five minutes to discuss with each other what the pattern is, OK? I'm going to put 
put something on the board to help you. I think some of you have got it. You're just not telling me. All right then, my lovelies, pop your pens down. <laughs> I think an investigation is very new to the way you work. Now, when I teach in England, I can't make investigations work because nobody pays any attention to me. <laughs> and their minds drift off sometimes. And with you, I think we need a few more investigation skills. Why did you find it hard? Could you, do you think you could explain? No. Okay. Does anybody know what analysis is? I think you do. I think you're being really shy because it's me. Who can tell me what analysis is? Have you got your hand up at the back? No. I think the open-endedness of the task was hard. Sometimes they can check each other's work, yes, yeah. <laughs> I think that, that that's also lovely. That yeah. was, that, yeah. w w that stupendously flopped, didn't it? Yeah. I said swap papers and mark each other's work <laughs> and everybody just sat there. Nobody swapped papers. With regard to the teaching styles, many, many times in our teacher training colleges, you are asked that uh, you should make your lessons as uh, learner-friendly, as interactive as possible. But many times we do not do this because our curriculum is overloaded. It is so packed so much so that the teacher is uh, left with the very little option but to turn to um, the lecture method, where the teacher, uh, more often than not, would go with the first learners and the slow learners are left behind. It's the same with our curriculum. We like to, we're encouraged to do investigations, but realistically, it takes so long. It's open-ended, they're supposed to find the point. You could just tell them the point in five minutes, but I suppose the point of an investigation is not what you learn. It's developing the thinking skills along the way, but you've got to have time. You need time to develop and those again, thinking skills. And again, without the investigatory approach, we are going to end up with the robots who mm. know the facts, yeah. but cannot put it down to paper. All right, about. Just up a path at the back of Morrow Secondary is their feeder primary. Jumbo. An easier journey for the locals. <laughs> Yes, how are you? The visitors were keen to see how their equivalent years seven and eights were taught. In Kenya, primary education's just been made free. But as a result, there's a grave shortage of teachers. We use long division method, isn't it? Yeah. Whereby we place 300 inside and outside we place what? Two. We place? Two. Two. Yeah. Is that what we do? Yeah. Now we do the cancellation, isn't it? Yeah. What do we cancel? Teacher. Yes, Majid, two times. Now what do we do now? Oh, we bring three down, isn't it? Yeah. Salin is saying that we bring three down. No. Huh? No. Oh, no. Yes, what do we bring down? Zero, not three, isn't it? Yes. And what do we do next? And boys are very quiet. What is wrong? Teacher. Yeah, girls are very active. My boys are dead. That is such a nice class. Yeah. You are such Thank a lovely you. teacher. Was it was great. <laughs> okay, After lunch on the final afternoon, Morrow's pupils watch a film produced by Maiden Hill students, showing what life is like for them. Does your dad work? Uh, yeah, he's an accountant. Yeah. Do you read any books, magazines? He's uh, well. Punch. Not really, no. Not really. Do you really have your own room? Yeah. yeah. Do you have like your own mobile phone? Yeah. Your own computer? Yeah. Do you have the internet? Yeah. Broadband? Yeah. <laughs> Are you um, religious at all? Um, no. I what do you want to be when you're older? Actress. <laughs> actress? What about Same you? as her, actress. Why do you want to be an actress? Just because you love drama? Yeah, I just think it's, it's really fun. You get to express yourself when you're doing acting. <laughs> what do you think of our pupils, having seen them there? 
At least they have some confidence. Some confidence. Yes. <laughs> Lots of confidence there. On the face of it, you think, oh, fantastic. I've got nobody interrupting me, nobody messing about, no behaviour issues. But on the other hand, the fact that our children do challenge us are often sceptical. For a democratic society, I realise that actually that is such a good thing. The age range is different, therefore the maturity is different, the society is different, the culture is different. There are different expectations of pupils in England to what there are in Morrow, and I think it would be very difficult for us to compare the two. I saw a lot of teaching in Moro, but I'm not sure how much learning actually went on. In terms of actually understanding, I'm not sure that they could apply that information somewhere else. You want assertive people, you want confident people that don't accept everything that is said to them. It's made me realise that we shouldn't knock it, we should actually be saying, yeah, that is good, and actually I've got to find a way of encouraging that, but in a helpful way that enables our children to learn what I'm trying to teach. <laughs> Oh, God, my dear boy.